Gipton, the original Sunshine Estate of East Leeds and home to about 13,000 people. Today, it's perhaps no longer the Sunshine Estate and there's going to be an enormous amount of change here over the next 10 years. A change that perhaps people in Gipton are not expecting. I've known Gipton for about 20 years. In fact, I once tried to get a house here and I've had friends and family living here. I'd begun to hear all kind of rumours about the future of the estate and I wanted to find out more. So we're off to see Stephen Boyle, who's the area manager for Leeds City Council for East Leeds. Uh, what I'm looking for with Stephen is really vision. You know, what is the vision for the changes in this area and where did it all go wrong? Where the problems really started kicking was mass unemployment. And some of those people, you know, they didn't survive it. You know, their, their morale and their family fortunes just didn't survive. And now what's happened with this area in Leeds is it's concentrated a population that's been affected by that and then by all the subsequent generations of those families. And it is a real concentration of poverty and all the other things that go with it. So what was it like when it was first built? Oh, it was quite nice. We were all very poor. Oh. Very, very poor people. Well, we were poor when we came here. Mm -hmm. We had no oot, but we all, we all went work. My grandfather and great-grandfather were part of the contractors that actually built this estate. And when was that? 1930s they started on Top End. It was a bit wild. There were still little bandits lived round here though, because if we came from Torres down here fishing in Beck, we'd usually get chased off again. <laughs> you took your life in your hands if you came fishing. When they first gave me a house on here, I said, oh, I'm not going to live on the Gipton. Because it had a bad reputation then. We used to have big brick fights throwing stones at each other. Week in, week out. <laughs> You'd be as bad now, you know. I think it was built because they were pulling down the slums on North Street and round there, you know, at the end of town there, mm. and for people to come up here. And I think it was quite posh, it was quite the place to live at that time. You know, if you got a house, new house on the Gipton. These, these were so modern, it was unbelievable. These have got indoor plumbing, electric lights, <laughs> bathrooms and things in the house for crying out. Yeah, but when you think about it, no, no, get him going. My, my gran lived on Torrey's. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They'd got the old, before they changed it, they'd got the old range, an outdoor loo, and one cold water tap. That was it. When these were built, they'd got the range with the back boiler for hot water. Bath indoor, not an old steel bath jobber that you filled up. Indoor loo and electric lights. It was built as what they call a sunshine estate. Lots of windows, lots of green, big ah. gardens. And uh, it was beautiful. Well, it still is to me. I still love Gipton. What's the joint venture about? Well, the joint venture is... Um, it's the way in which uh, the council and the developer, which um, is uh, likely to be Bellway, um, will work together. So it, it'll be a, like a company structure or a, um, a deal, a contract. And the deal is a partnership um, and it works on the basis that, like these sites here, um, the council will put land in to a joint venture and the developer will put money in and some expertise, you know, of house building and so forth. The outcome of that will be new houses on that land. The houses will be sold and the joint venture will get the profit from the, from the sale of the houses and that profit will then be used um, by Bellway to keep its shareholders happy and by the council to invest in the area. In what way is it different now? Well, uh, the people are different and they, they don't, they're not as friendly as they used to be. Gipton. Gipton, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a name, and you think of Gipton, you think of Gipton, can't be Ireland. <laughs> you say, I'm going up Gipton, and everyone goes, what, you going up there? 
Call you me go, violent. You're going to call me... <laughs> watch your socks. <laughs> I don't know why they say that, watch your socks. <laughs> why is it called call me violent? I have no idea, I don't know, because I said back in the days anyway, my brother told me this anyway, that it can't be violent because that's all Gibson Knights can afford. But I'm, but I'm on the edge of Gipton now, let's get that straight. Well, what really impresses me about Gipton is that you can go down the street and in that house is your granny and in that house is your mum and in that everybody house... Everybody knows everybody, it's yeah. like, just like... So it's a proper community? Well, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say proper, but it's a community. See, because even though everybody knows each other, everybody knows that everybody's everybody fiend or somewhere. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? It's too... They know too much. Do you think? Yeah. I don't think there's as much burglaries as what there used to be. Your houses, I used to be getting burgled all the time, and then you just find out who, at them times you find out who's buying the stuff, and then you go and tell them, look, I better go stop getting burgled, man. <laughs> yeah, and that's how, that, yeah, that's how it works. Most of the houses that are going to get built will be built for sale, and most of them will be built for sale on the open market, although about 20% will be retained and uh, they'll be put into an affordable housing programme. Do you know that parts of Gipton are within the top 3% in the UK of the most deprived area? Are they? Oh. Now that has shocked me. Do you consider you living in a deprived community? One of the top 3% in the UK? Well, no. No, not all. That's very, very surprised me, it really has. I never expected that. Is it going on how many people are working? Is that how they work it out? Because there is a lot of unemployed here, you know, and there's a lot of single parents that obviously don't work because they're bringing up the kids. So if they worked it out on those sort of levels, then obviously that's it would come out with that, but the actual fact of living here is it isn't, it isn't deprived, I don't think. Maybe because there's a lot of drugs up here as well. Well, the people in the area, are quite a lot of people are on things, do you know what I mean? Um, and if you're on things, they can't hold jobs down or anything, can they? The big difference now is we were frightened a place, but the kids of today are not. The kids of today know that the police can't touch them. Some of the kids here don't even go to school, do you know what I mean? So they haven't got an education, so obviously they go on social when they leave school. No, there's no discipline in schools. There's no discipline on the streets. There's no discipline anywhere for them now. North Gipton's are all full they're of all faggots, faggots and stuff like and, that. And, and and well, they're like our arch rivals. What, what don't you like about them? Because <laughs> I think they're hard. Pussies! <laughs> but you lot think you're hard down here, don't you? Yeah, but yeah. we are, there's yeah, a difference. Yeah, we are hard, aren't we? <laughs> OK. Well, it is quite sad to see how, how the kids have changed so much. They've got nowhere to go, nothing to do. Right, history. I ain't got a fucking Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> history. I know the synagogue. Do you know the, um, what do you call it? The Sanners up there. No, I don't know that. What's that? That's Gibson. <laughs> what? The Beth. The Beth. Yeah. yeah. That's where we ride all the motorbikes and that. But police are stopping us. You should try and get us some. I know, there. we had a fucking track up there. Nobbeds, because they weren't getting paid enough catching us on. Thingy. They started us. saying loads well, of shit like we didn't have no insurance and stuff you like that. You should try and get us back up there. We should try and get his aunt back up there on his bike. I remember where everything used to be, but it's all been knocked down now, like, say, Brandy Street there. They've all, like, had flats and all that built up. See where the shop is on Brander Road? Yeah, I know. Over at Road from that used to be a big row of shop. All, all of them have gone. By the cemetery? See, see where that car park is there? There used to be a big school there, bigger than this, massive. That's gone. Okay. Fish shop up there used to be... I forgot what... Carfin or some like compound, that's gone. Side of post office used to be hairdressers and shit, that's gone. It's fucking everything's gone, my soldier. Oh, like say years to come, all this, all, all this will be gone. Making like they should, they should do parks and that, you know, for little kids, cause there's no parks around here. So if they in and like they, what are they gonna grow up to see fucking us? You know what I mean? And then they're gonna do the same thing as what we've done. Why, why is it? All, why did it all change? Why? Did, I mean, that sounds to me like just. Loads of the infrastructure, the things which are important to a community, like shops, places to go, yeah. places to meet people. When? Why do you think it all went? It's cool. I know why all them shops up there, because they got fucking burnt out and all that, and they were always getting robbed and all that. But that's 
that's them. Then when them shots were up there, I were about fucking nine then or something. Ten still living on the other side, just used to come over here. But now I see it as um, when streets are getting knocked down all like that now. It's all because of us, you know what I mean? Fucking. I don't know. That's a shame, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's. They're going to build a th about a thousand new houses all over Gipton. Yeah, do you mean just like on West bit lands yeah, yeah. and that? What do you think yeah. of that? All private, new yeah. people coming in. Do you it think won't be, be Gibson. We'll what? Why won't it be Gibson if they build houses? Because Gibson's really more known for its. Um, what, what, I don't know how to um, say it. Like more known for its you know fucking what? bad things and Charlie Cars, <laughs> motorbikes, but they're going to be too posh for everyone and then more things. I know, and then all. This kind of shows you the, the scale of the challenge. In part, um, you know, the, the whole of Gipton isn't like this and the whole of Inner East Leeds isn't like this, but there are lots and lots of pockets like this. And what you can see here is an area of fairly recent housing that's been even more recently improved as part of an estate action scheme, but which is now completely abandoned because of antisocial behaviour and crime. It would actually cost more now to refurbish these properties um, than it would, be, would to demolish them and then make the land available for new housing. But why has it got so bad in these Leeds? Um, well, one of the reasons, to be honest, is that the environmental management in Leeds is chronically underfunded. It's one of the reasons why the opportunity of this joint venture is um, you know, so important because it means that, for once, we've got a chance to get some real quality back into the environment. Is this the responsibility of a council or of a community? This is the responsibility, well, the, the people who are responsible for the property is the Housing Association. OK. Um, but um, it's, it's a classic kind of spiral, isn't it? Because everyone knows it's going to get demolished. It's not important. So what you're saying is, is that actually there's a lot of different agencies responsible for this mess. The agencies, funnily enough, didn't come round one dark night and drop loads of litter and other things lying sure. about. That's people who live around here who've done that. So the community have a responsibility? Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, and that's it, isn't it? That's the, um, that's, that's the challenge, to get the community and the services together to, uh, to take a, a responsibility jointly. And that actually will be an important part of the work. If we can get the confidence of people that we will deliver services and, you know, we won't abandon places like this, um, then they'll reciprocate and we'll get, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a, a, a better relationship between the council and the other services and local people, because it isn't particularly good at the moment. And if you go to a public meeting, it's usually a bit of a shouting match. I'll be moving out once I can get a house in that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Well, I don't like Gipton. I mean, this area is an all right it's, area where I live, but bad. Okay, I don't yeah. want to live in Gipton. Why? I don't get why. Because of the, the name that it's got, Gipton, and what, what it's classed for. <laughs> you know, Giptonites and that, and it's just just not respect... Well, people don't respect the area. You know, people yeah, who live outside it. the area don't respect the area. And so, you get it before, you even, before you even know the person, they're classing you with somebody yeah. else, yeah. sometimes. Because of what other people do. If they don't know who you are. That's right. So, Gipton, I don't really... I want to be bring up my kids and that. Not to say I've got any, but they bring up my kids and that when I grow older and stuff, you know, in Gipton. Oh, you... There's nice areas, posh areas, if you want to say, you know, that I've got nice, I've got nice parks. So do you know what's going to happen in Gipton in the future over the next 20 years? No. 20 years? That's no. a bit long, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I've been knocking some houses down and... Is that what you've heard? Well, that's what I've heard, oh, yeah. yeah. Over the next about 10 years, they're going to build about a thousand new houses on the, on the spare land already. To improve the quality of life for people who live here. Mm, that'd be good. So it turns out like that, what want to move out. <laughs> I thought about what I'd heard. It seemed complex. New housing and general improvement seemed like a good thing to me, but I wanted to find out if other young people wanted to leave. You're having a baby, aren't you, Dee? Yeah. Well done, congrats. Thank you. So you're going to have a baby in Gipton? 
Yes. Second baby in Gipton. Yes. Is that good? Um. Anywhere you go, <laughs> there's drugs, there's violence. Da, da. It's home. It's home. Mm. I'm planning to move from here as this is a Gibson property. Um, and I want something where I can call home and I can do things to that ain't going to cost... Well, it's going to cost me a fortune, but I'm going to get to... It's mine. It's not something that I'm going to lose in... Well, I'm here three years at a maximum because that's how long support lasts. So in a year, I lose everything that I've put into the house. And I've already spent something like £500 on the house. So I'm planning to move somewhere local now. What, what do you know about the changes? Just that I know this land has actually now been sold to a private company that will be making some developments over the next 10 years. Well, maybe that kind of through this process of changing Gipton, you and Sean can start to find some work so you can live together. And maybe you might be one of the people who eventually might buy one of these new houses in a couple of years' time. It sounds like they're doing things for a better. Law and order, cleaning up the streets, getting criminals out or, or sorted out clean all the shit off the streets? Well, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a good idea. Um, I'd like to learn some more about it before I actually definitely settle on the idea that it's for the be best. But I believe that change is always in the long run for the better. There's always been lots of promises, but no outcome, no follow-up. And it'd be nice to make a difference. The old ship houses, they're interesting, they're different to... Ah, she lives up there. She lives off the back on this. The vision for new houses sounded great, but I was still unclear whether residents really wanted to stay in Gipton, let alone buy a house here. If you had the money, would you buy this house? Well, yeah, because I like, I like this square. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's right nice. Yeah, it's not on the main road. Kids are all right in the street and everything, so I would, yeah. But you're, this is a supported house, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't need that support anymore because I've been with them two years now. So I'm going to have to move house now, which is, I don't really want to do. You've got to move house or you want to move house? No, I've got to because um, if I want to stay in this house, I'm going to have to keep the support, which I don't need anymore, so I'm stopping someone else because Gibson have only got so many houses. You it's don't need any help because you've got yourself together and everything's fine and now yeah. you've got to move out? Yeah, yeah and start all over again. <laughs> so you're applying for a house with the council? Yeah, I'm just applying at the moment. Oh, yeah. I want to stay in Gipton though, and uh, when you, because you've got to bid for houses now, when you do that, there isn't many in the books, is there? No. Not for around Gipton. What do you mean you've got to bid for houses? What? You've got to go into, you go into the rent office now and there's a book out and it shows you all the houses that are available in the areas and you get a little form and you've got a bidding number and you've got to put it in and those, like, they'll look through them all and the ones that have got, like, more priority, they'll give them to them, all the ones that have been waiting the longest. They say you've got to bid every week. If there's no houses in Gipton, how are you supposed to bid? You've got to bid for somewhere else and then if you get offered them, we don't want to move in them areas. You're going to have a baby, right? So are you going to bring up a baby in Gipton? Yeah. And what, I mean, that's a, that's a very positive, yeah? Why, why Gipton? Why do you think Gipton's a good place for you to bring up a kid? Come on, I've turned out. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't think it's a bad area. I think it's a good place to bring up a, a kid. It's friendly, there's schools about, there's good education. It's, it's, a, it's a good area, it's not a bad area to bring up a child. And are you going to try and get a house? Yeah, I'm just currently waiting now. So what are you going to do? Are you going to buy a house or are you looking for a council house? Um, council house at the minute. It's so like my fee yeah. and then. But, but there's not, you can't afford a mortgage, can you, when you're on social and bringing up a kid? You need to go, go get a job and then you've got your childcare and then everything's out. You're supposed to afford a mortgage on top of that. Yeah, it's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Gipton's going to change. It's going to change in a big way. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what those changes are, but I'm hearing things like... Won't well, they have to knock some more down? Well... So what families be getting moved out, in a way? What's I know they've done, there's a, they've done lots of green everywhere, haven't they? So well, maybe that's where they're putting them. They've knocked down a lot of council houses, but if they're on about building private ones, what's the point? When there's so many people waiting on a council list to be a council tenant. But the houses, the private houses, I can't see how that's going to benefit any of us. I think that's a bit shit, really. To be honest with you, you'd have thought that they'd have bought 
the, the, the little bit more council houses because yeah. there's a lot of people waiting. Yeah. It'd be more common sense, wouldn't it, to do that? Mm. So, how many bedrooms are these houses? Mine's three bedrooms. And how many live here? There's seven adults and a baby. Crikey, that's a lot of people, isn't it? Mm. I've got 18 year old twins in a box room. I've got my middle daughter in the next room, me and my husband in the main bedroom, and then I've got Leanne and her husband sleeping on this bed settee, and the baby is sleeping on that beanbag. There's such a lot of problems getting houses now. Everybody I know is, is putting in bids, not getting anywhere, they're not getting any houses, and yet the houses are going. So who's getting them all? No idea. And let's face it, all these. Um, Single parents, they get everything. They've no problems, have they? They get their rent paid. They get stuff from social, so they don't need to go out to work. It's such as us at work. They get no... There was talk, we knocked a load of houses down low at Gipton Crescent and Amagon Close. And they were supposed to be building these affordable houses for people that rented houses to buy. Affordable mortgages. So we put his name down. Now, before they'd even started, they had the prices. And the one we picked was a four bedroom house with a garage, 77,000. Wow. Fantastic. It was a year after, still not been decided, and it got up 10,000. And be built. But they've gone from 77 to 87. And then when I kept asking about it, oh, it's. Uh, Planning permission, they're waiting for that. It finally come through and they slant built them. And now I found out that these eighty seven pound uh, eighty seven thousand are now ninety seven thousand. So they're just going up and up and up. We can't afford one of them now. Uh, someone it's a lot said of money, isn't it? But they're supposed to be affordable houses for people that can't afford to go out and buy an house for these that's renting it to buy. Suddenly, Stephen's vision of affordable housing seemed problematic. People who wanted to buy them simply don't have the means. We're going to be getting a project up and running in the next six months called Building Family Wealth. OK. Which is about... It'll, it'll, it'll only be able to deal with maybe 50, 60 families, but... Um, what will that do? Well, it'll basically look at um, a plan for each family um, around uh, income, debt if there's a problem with that, training helping people into employment or if they need skills training first um, or even things like basic literacy and numeracy which is quite often an issue, health, so it'll cover a whole range of different things uh, and the idea is to give people a, a, a sort of a hand up and, um, and then you know enable them to make a better chance for themselves and their families. If you get more than one generation of what's now called multiple deprivation, in other words, you know, you're out of work, you're very poor, you're living in crappy housing, um, you know, you're, you're drifting into crime, you're, your health's bad, and then that happens to the, to the next generation and the next generation, you get this kind of attitude which is, you know, very difficult to deal with. People need help, but also I think people need to understand that um, there is an expectation that it's going to be a, a nice place, it's going to be clean and it's going to be safe. And if they're contributing to the dirt and the danger, then there's going to be a consequence to that. There will be a return of money from the development process that can be reinvested in the area. But the real challenge we've got is it's a once in a lifetime chance. So we can make that investment, we can get the change, we should be, with a bit of imagination, set up neighbourhood management structures that people who live here work, work for so it creates training and employment. But if we don't get that right, the money will come and go. While talking to Stephen, I spotted Lee going into the community centre. I knew he'd been trying to find work for a long time and from what Stephen had said, there would be opportunities. How are you doing all right? They've been promising stuff for years, they've been promising stuff in here for years and then whatever happens, I'll start doing it and all of a sudden it'll just drop off. And then you won't hear about it again for ages. And then we'll have another idea, start doing it, then drop that off. A lot of shit. I hear that they're going to do things like um, nobody who lives in Gipton currently has to move out, but they're going to add another 750 families to the area. 
to Gipton. What so, council terms? Don't know, private houses, I think. Or mixture of houses. Why? What, what was the face about? Like, they're going to sell houses over to the people that have got money, that they're going to pay jobs on that side to buy houses, and then it will just there will be more trouble, more crime on that. If they've got money, they have, obviously they'll have better stuff in their house. Which is when they, the kids around here, they won't know them, so it might be pinching off your door. So it'll be just like having a little shop in your back garden. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard really it described like that. Mm. So private houses will be a shop in the back garden they get to. <laughs> they'll have everything that these do, so easy pickings in it. Yeah, maybe. Would you like to have a job rebuilding your community? Well, I don't have any job at the moment. So what would it be up for, labouring? Yeah, it's anything I could do. Is it? Well, I'm not um, qualified in that else. So I don't know if I could do, have me doing that else. So maybe one of the things that you could do is, is that you could try and get yourself a job with them people as a labourer to start with, and then try and persuade them to let you go and do your papers as a sparky or a joiner or... Something like that. Yeah. I'm just thinking, if, there, if, there, if there's going to be a big rebuilding in this area, it strikes me that that's a great opportunity for you, Lee. I'm not sure Lee was convinced about the opportunity open to him, and Stephen was keen to press on. He wanted to expand on his vision for getting Gipton back to work. That is a, a brand new Mr Blair City Academy. It'll serve the local catchment area in the main. Uh, but it's, it's like uh, all the city academies, um, they have a specialist subject or a specialist theme and um, it's really good actually because it's the built environment. Oh, is it? So that school is hopefully going to train up all the construction workers and Fantastic. QSs and architects and people like that. There's an idea called Enterprise Island, which is one of the sort of slightly more imaginative schemes that Bellway came up with, which is a, a kind of a centre for small business units and um, business start-up units and things like that. So for people who want to set businesses up. Um, but I don't see major employment development happening in the residential areas, you know, big okay. factories or things like that. That will be concentrated mostly down at Cross Green. Um, and now that the East Lead Link Road's going in, there's going to be a lot of development down there, and that's not far but the problem we've got is a bus route. Yeah. There's no bus route down there. Now, if there's a decent bus route down there, there's 30,000 jobs there in the next 20 years. And that is a major opportunity for the people here, as long as we can get people skilled up to get them. How do you get those people to take those jobs, but then stay in their community to invest in that and stay in By giving places? them here what they're moving to around here to get, which usually is a house to buy that they can own themselves that doesn't belong to the council or to somebody else. And that's what, one of the most important parts of the change here. So you're going to have improvements. Get the place sorted out. Put some resources in to get it cleaned up. You've seen some of the rubbish and the, and the, and the, and the crap. Get some law and order back. Get, in other words, get the place back under control. Then people have confidence. Then we start doing some serious work with um, skills and with um, local services. And one of the things that the developer has got to do uh, as part of the deal is to invest in new schools, uh, better transport and better infrastructure, including this space here. And that's part of the up, that will be upfront part of the deal early on in the first four, five years or so. And then we start seeing the houses. So you're starting to get the virtuous circle. You know, you help people, you give people a lift up, they get on the first rung of the ladder on employment, they've got a, um, a reasonably What's the word I'm looking for? A, a reasonably reliable income. They can afford to take a risk on a mortgage. They get the house. They, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's like, the theory. Like, like we did. <laughs> Three old Marys every night. I was sold. New houses, new infrastructure, new jobs. I was ready to follow Stephen into the promised land. I know what they say they're going to do. Uh, but that's vast different from what actually... But, but the fact that they're backing off on the decision that was made about the bungalows in the Manticues was already ringing alarm bells in my head. I know what they say they're going to do. Um, and I'm also... I, but it's just when I hear, oh, my goodness, we haven't started the building and already they're backing off, then that really does so sort of concern. So then I have to ask myself... Do, if I'm on the inside and I'm supposed to know all this, 
do you know do I really know it or are the change in the goalposts and sometimes I get the impression the goalposts are changed quite regularly well I know they have actually they're always saying they want to work with the community and they are listening to the community well this is their chance to prove it in my earlier enthusiasm for Stephen's plans I'd not taken in one of the most significant changes coming to Gipton this is the Whitebeck Valley Green Corridor, or soon to be called the Whitebeck Valley Country Park. The idea is to create um, a leisure area, a sort of, you know, um, informal recreation area in this green space, which runs right through from uh, Round Here Park, just to the north, down to the Air Valley, um, which is about two or three miles away. Um, it's probably the widest part of it where we are here, and you can see this playing fields in the sports centre as well, but there's um, areas further down that are um, quite uh, away from, from the built-up area. There's a lot of trees and shrubs. There are even protected species. Is there? The white-clawed crayfish, no less. But both of the two big developers that competed for the easel deal made a big play of this because they realised that in turning the area around and trying to create an environment that would be attractive to new people moving in. There's even a possibility there might be a bus lane through here at some point in the near future. The thought of a country park in Gipton blew me away and I knew others would be blown away too. Do you know there's going to be a lot of changes in Gipton over the next 20 years? I don't know, it's always changing as the world. But there's going to be a lot and, and I hear that where we are now, if you look behind you over there, all through here from Roundy Park, coming all the way over those hills, and all the way into the distance, almost as far as your eye can see, is there's a, a talk about this becoming a nature reserve. I think that's fantastic. Do you? Why, why, do you th why? why do you think that's so good? I love nature. I've always loved wildlife and nature. I've always... It's always fascinated me, the things that... Plants and wildlife and all the different things they can do, all the different varieties you've got. Amazing. If all of this changes and it all becomes all just wildlife, how do you think that will change your life? I think I'll be getting out a lot more. <laughs> and I think I'll be getting a lot more into life because I'm having to walk down here, but it'd be worth it in the end. It'd be somewhere for me to go. Do you think people should put up with um, with a community which, uh, when they're not satisfied with certain things in it, or do you think that people should take action? Well, yeah, I mean, if you don't sow the soil, there'll be no corn. So you've got to put effort in if you want it to be nice. I mean, it's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. It says, I don't want that, give me a better one. There is no better one. You've got to do it yourself. DIY. You're interested in forestry, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping to be, get involved in a, um, a job in that. To, um, in that field of work? Yeah, that's the word. It strikes me that if they're going to turn this into a beautiful place, A, someone's got to do it, and B, it's got to be maintained. Mm. And I think there has to be opportunities for, for you to, to get involved in that. Yay! No, well, I don't know, I can't promise you, but there has to be. Yeah, You live for so. this, your community. I mean, what, is that something that would really interest you? That's something that would really interest me. I'd love to work, to work out here, it's so much space. I love large spaces. I don't have anything against small ones, but I like, I like room to breathe, you know? Yeah, I do. But this would suit me if I, if I could get a job like that. But hey, it's nice to dream. Listen to the birds out here. I know. Everywhere you turn, you can hear different sounds. Right in the middle of inner city Leeds. Yeah. I'm saying now, just sitting here thinking about it, I'm saying. I understood the magnitude of the change, the opportunities for local people to be involved, the desire for authorities to engage with residents. I thought about what Iris and Jim had said about young people lacking direction and something to do, and even though the plans hadn't been finalised, I felt the need to commit myself to getting young people involved. Young kids nowadays just don't learn. It's my time now, it's my turn, should have known better. I'd previously met Janine, AKA Taurus, away from the estate and I hadn't realised she was from Gipton. Could she be an asset to the team of evolving young activists? Don't really want to waste my energy on you. I've got a message and I've got things to talk about and things to express 
you know what I mean, not exactly what's on my heart. Do you know what I'm saying? And if I feel it needs to get expressed, I'll, I'll, I'll mash it down in lyrical form. Do you know what I'm saying? On over a beat. What I say is what you uh, you shit, they shit, nigga, you uh, nigga, what the? <laughs> Do you know much about the changes which are going to happen in Gipton? No. Do you know nothing? No. So you live in Gipton and you don't know what's, what's going to happen in, in, over the next 20 years? No. There's going to be at least a thousand new houses built in Gipton. It'd have to, it'd have to seriously be planned right, of, of course. So it can, you know, bring in exactly who they want to bring in. You can paint a house a pretty colour, you know what I mean? And you can fix a road, you know what I mean? A ditch in a road, so no one will trip over it. But unless you help the people, you know what I mean? Because for all we know, they could build it, but then it could just get, can get completely just torn down. The reason why I think they're so keen to kind of build these houses in Gipton is because more and more people want to continue living in Gipton. I knew my mum, it was hard for her to, you know, want to leave. But it was simply because of the people, not the actual, you know what I mean? Not the presence of the area. Do you know what I'm saying? It was simply because of the, the people, the, the things that were going on, because of these people, left, right and centre, chaos. And she just didn't want that kind of environment for her kids. But now, these days, you get it in all kinds of areas. It's not like it's just Gipton. Community action is definitely what any kind of fallen community needs. Do you know what I'm saying? It needs something that can bring people together on a respectable level. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Without whatever divides there may be, if it means maybe doing a few performances, you know what I mean, to try and help bring people together or whatever I could, whatever I could do, you know what I'm saying? So, there's going to be a, a public meeting in about four weeks' time where the council decision makers are, are going to announce the plans. They're going to talk through with people what they want to happen, OK? And I'm going to go to that meeting and we're going to film that meeting and we're inviting people to come with us. Hey. We live on Gipton. Nice. So, are you down? I'm down. Done? I'm down. Deal's done? Deal's done. Just start learning, been deceived up to the point of no return A voice to the community, now it's my turn To share a bit of what I witnessed and heard Family were meant to come to the estate Somewhere down the line, it took a twist of fate Now, North and South, Gibson, gang war Now say it in your face while kicking down your door If we make a difference from the ignorance that we face Make it better for the kids, help them make a way Getting them to do sports, pull them from the ashtray Things need to change, things can't stay the same Too many thinking that it's a game Acting like that they got no brain Moves are being made, the money's being spent Revival in the zone to see how it ends